Hi, and welcome to The Landis Look, where we take an inside look at the world of real estate. I'm Justin, and here today with me are Casey and Caitlin. Welcome, guys. Hi. Hey, thanks for being with us today. We're gonna to take an inside look at buying a house during COVID. Caitlin is a brand new homeowner just last week. Congratulations. Thank you. And it's also your birthday, so thanks for spending your birthday yeah. doing this video. <laughs> this is gonna be like a birthday bucket list for you, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. You know, perfect way to bring it in. Perfect way to ring it in. And Casey's one of the awesome agents at the Justin Landis Group who um, worked with Caitlin. And so, I mean, first of all, let's start with when did you guys start the house hunt and how did you get connected? And then we'll just kind of tell everybody the story. Okay. So I had been living in an apartment that I loved, but during all of this going on, I just didn't know if I'd be able to afford to stay there. Um, so it seemed like a good idea to at least look into houses and and what the market is in Atlanta I went on Zillow and found a house that I thought I really liked and randomly got connected with Casey through that um they connected us and it just kind of went from there so so randomly got connected to Casey yep. and I'll just say you hit the real estate agent jackpot by going through Zillow <laughs> and getting Casey I mean seriously um and so was that first house, I mean, Casey, did y'all see that house in, this was during COVID, so could you see houses normally? What was, what was all that like, the initial connection? Yeah, it was definitely different trying to figure out, you know, different houses that are vacant versus houses that are lived in and what the protocols are. So we both showed up, uh, you know, with our masks ready to go. I have hand sanitizer and wipes in my car at all times now. So kind of have our, our COVID arsenal um, but yeah, we met up at the first house and we loved it, but it wasn't the one. So we kept on, you know, I got her criteria and we kept on our search and uh, eventually found the one she has now. Another thing before we move on that I just thought you said Caitlin was really interesting because this is so true, but I don't think a lot of people realize that you obviously did is you said, I wasn't sure I could afford my apartment. So I wanted to look for a house. And I think that's counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. Tell me a little bit more about that, that kind of thought process. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's a lot of money to put down on a house. It's not like I just have that kind of cash flowing. But when you think about how much, even for this house, how much I'm either saving or close to paying compared to my rent every month for an extra 500 square feet and extra bedrooms and all of those little things and I own it, it made like the difference. And I think having that support system too of my family being like, this is the right move made it a little bit easier. Yeah, man, I mean, I think that is so wise and I love your perspective on that. And I think a lot of people don't realize that, that yeah, a lot of times you can be living in a house you own, a place you own and it's the same or less then rent in your building equity and building wealth. So yeah, I love that. So how long did the house hunt take from the time you all met at that first house until you found the house that you're in now? Probably, I'd probably say between like just putting an offer in probably three weeks. Did you feel like that was fast or do you feel like that was a long time or just about right? How did that, how did you feel about oh, that? Oh, I thought it was very fast. I was yeah. like, panicked about it. Like, <laughs> I mean, it's scary. The whole, the whole process of buying a house is already like terrifying enough. And when you're dealing with COVID where it, it's kind of hard to navigate if this is normal behavior, or, yeah. you know, it, it definitely played a role into it, but it definitely was faster than I anticipated. And Casey, is that fast or is that normal or is that slow? How does three weeks compare to most of the clients you work with? I think it depends. I think that, you know, it depends on the criteria, the their price point, what area of town they're looking in. There's so many factors that go into the length of time that it takes to look. Um, but I think that, you know, we walked in this house and Caitlin kind of knew like this one felt right for her. Um, and like she said, you know, it's scary because there's a lot going on right now, but we, she just had that gut feeling. And so um, I think three weeks is a little fast, maybe caught her off guard, but um, when you know, you know. You feel the same way, Caitlin, when you knew you knew? You walked in this house yeah. and you were like, yeah. And what was it that gave you that, what was it that gave you that feeling? Oh, gosh. Well, I think for one, I'm from up north and from the northeast. And I think it was the first house that I really saw that kind of reminded me of home even. It looked familiar. Um, you know, maybe not necessarily the porch, but the style compared to the rest of like the bungalows in town. 
Um, and I think that was like the first draw to it. And even I showed, when I showed Casey, it looks picturesque. Like it doesn't look like it fits in this neighborhood. It's on the corner. It's just a lot of green and, you know, it just felt very like storybookish. And I was like, all right, we got to look at this a little more. <laughs> yeah. There's so much to just that feel of the house. I mean, I remember when we were looking for, um, our first house, my wife's like, well, I want a house that has it factor. You don't type it factor into Zillow and be like, hey, yeah. pull back all the houses that have the it factor, you know? You have to kind of figure out what that is for yourself. Um, so, you know, getting the offer and that sort of stuff, we've always done that for a long time electronically. So that's not any different to, you know, sign an offer electronically, get it accepted. But a lot of the process after you get the house under contract is typically done in person. You're going to a home inspection, you're going to a closing, you're coming back to look at things, getting quotes. What was it like? You got the house, and if I recall, you had to get it really quickly, right? Came on the market and bought it right away? Yeah, it, it came on the market on like a Friday night at like nine or 10 o'clock at night. And at this point, I'd already been like struggling with like, maybe I should wait, maybe this isn't the right time. And on a whim, I went on Zillow or Realtor and it popped up and it wasn't in like my normal MLS email. And I immediately texted Casey. I was like, I don't know if this house is still available because a lot of the other ones were gone so quick. And I said, but I want to see it. And we got the ball rolling within probably like six hours. We saw the house. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And I mean, that goes to show that this was at the height of COVID when there was a lot of, you know, stay at home orders in place, all that stuff. And still right away, I mean, real estate has always been essential. And the great houses have moved quickly um, throughout this time. So you got under contract, which is awesome. Then what happened? What was the process like home inspection and closing and all that kind of thing? It was in, in a sense, it was kind of chaotic because as a first time home buyer, like even just knowing the timeline, you panic. Like soon as you hear those numbers and you're like, you have seven days, you have three days, you have 21 days, like, and they all overlap. You immediately like, stress out um but it's nice because Casey really just took the reins. she's like I got it I'm gonna figure it out for you don't worry um but it was it was weird because you want to be a part of that process and in, in buying your house and and going through your first inspection and things like that and that was the hard thing is you couldn't you know thankfully a lot of the contractors and inspectors were nice enough to be willing to talk on the phone and really go through their reports but not the same as seeing it in person. Yeah. I mean, Casey, as you think about it compared to before COVID, I mean, what do you think is the biggest thing that was different for Caitlin's experience versus the norm? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's basically what she just said is, you know, she wants to be a part of the process. So she wants to be, you know, after the inspection, be at the house to see all the things that maybe the inspector points out just to feel more involved, uh, wants to have their agent at closing, you know, just, that's who's been there through the process with them. And this is the last hurdle. And so just kind of those little personal touches that you would normally have and be able to do, um, not being able to do those. Like she said, we still had phone calls. We still had those things. So we were kept informed, um, but it's not quite the same. Yeah. As you look at the end result, though, I'm curious about this from both of y'all's perspective. If you look at the end result, no doubt the feeling of it is different for sure. But what about the actual results? Do you think that things turned out the same they would have had you physically been there? Or do you think that there were things that ended up that might have been different? What do you guys, I mean, I know this is an opinion question, but what do you think about that? Um, as a first time home buyer, I don't know. Like that would probably be my best answer is because I don't know the difference. Um, I would, I think if anything, I'm little things that maybe I would have noticed with an inspector here that maybe I would have asked more questions on when it came to the seller or, um, you know, or even the inspector on, okay, why does this need to be fixed this way? Or, or is that normal looking or, you know, different things like that might have been the only thing that I can really compare, but until I buy my second house, I don't know. <laughs> we'll have you back on. We'll make sure it's a birthday. We'll get you back on. Got it. <laughs> Here, house number two, it's a COVID house number one. Casey, what's your perspective? And once again, it's an opinion question, but what do you think if you were to say, hey, we could have done it normally versus this, do you think there would have been some different outcomes or you think that it just felt different and mostly ended up the same? I 
it mainly felt different. I think for Caitlin in her case, she's very inquisitive and she she notices things and she wants to know about things where there's some buyers that are just like, okay, whatever you say, I don't really care. So I think it depends on the buyer as well. Um, I think for, for Caitlin, it would have made a little bit of a difference, but I have other buyers that are like, I don't even want to be there even if I could. So um, to them, it wouldn't have made a difference at all, obviously, but. Yeah. And so now you're in the house, right? I mean, we're videoing this, you're actually in the house. Yes. Awesome. And so what's been the impression? I mean, you moved in, you're like, finally, I can have it, you know, have my first house. What was it like? What's it been like since you've been there? It's been great so far. I mean, there's definitely things that I noticed throughout the house that I'm like, oh, I want to change this. I want to do this. You know, you start to like build up your project list very quickly. Um, and it's definitely an adjustment, you know, when you live like I was living in the city. Um, so not having that sense of not necessarily a community, but you don't have your neighbors so readily nearby or you don't have maybe your security guy at the front desk, you know, it's, it's those little things that you probably took for granted when you were growing up in your house until you moved into apartment that I'm like reestablishing back for myself. So it, it's definitely been an adjustment, but it's been great to like reacquaint myself with like living more of a suburban life again. I love it. And so if you had any advice for people who are going to buy their first house based on your experience, what would be like one of your biggest pieces of advice for people who are listening? Um, ask questions. Like it may sound so easy, but they don't teach you half this stuff in school. They don't tell you about home inspections. They don't tell you about what earnest money is or any of that stuff. So I think having a real estate agent who is receptive to that and understands that this is all completely new for you and you may need it as simplified as possible you know, to really understand it is okay. It's not, you don't have to feel kind of silly for asking. And, and Casey is, did a great job at that. That is some great advice. I mean, I completely agree with that. Man, ask questions. We're doing this every single day, all the time. And yeah, you, I mean, you're buying your first house and even people who are buying their second or third, you usually haven't done it for years in between. So yeah, I mean, definitely ask questions. If any of y'all watching do want to watch a series. We actually filmed a series during COVID that walked through the entire buying and selling process. It's a lot of information, but it really does walk met the whole thing. We'll put the link of that um, in the bottom of this video. And we're always happy to answer personal questions for you. If you don't want to play real estate agent roulette and you actually want to hit the jackpot on your own, you can send us a message. We'll connect you with Casey um, to get those questions answered. And Caitlin, we really appreciate your time today. Thanks for being on here. Thanks, Casey, for sharing your expertise. And um, we hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Awesome. awesome. Thanks. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.